What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Dak Attack. Thanks for tuning into the channel. Coming to you with another book breakdown. And this one is on, it's on the free agent lifestyle by Coach Greg Adams. Shout out to the coach gang for being involved and being active here on this YouTube channel. So without further ado, I'll jump right in. Um, so I'm gonna start with the book tell you how I kind of got to it and then also kind of my feelings on MGTO. I will start off with I definitely don't describe myself as a MGTO kind of person but I do mess with the free agent lifestyle and kind of the whole idea of the book but let me get into it. So the, the first the first real um, tenet he kind of puts in there is is keeping yourself unchained and he kind of talks about this very broadly. I know more so on his channel he focuses on Mig toe and uh, dealing with women. I'm gonna keep that more to the end uh, and more why I resonated with it because it's more of a holistic approach of keeping yourself on chain to jobs, the government, and women. So it's like, you know, creating something for yourself. It definitely had an entrepreneur entrepreneurial bent to it that you know you don't want to be a slave to a nine to five you know taking care of your finances facing yourself and actually taking responsibility for your life looking at the government from a perspective of you know not always needing to bail you out not having to rely on them some of his stuff that he talks about his financial advice i mean I, I personally i would take it with a grain of salt um but you know just keeping in your mind that like you know you want to be independent and you can't be weak and dependent uh weak and independent uh you can't be strong and dependent at the same time you have to kind of have this self responsibility and kind of take care of yourself and focus on that and focus on what you want to do and it's free and it, it free and dependent is is the word so basically it's mostly focused on mo mostly focused on you um, you know, taking responsibility for yourself, your your life, and understanding that you cannot be both free and dependent at the same time. If you're dependent on something, whether it be a job, a woman, a relationship, or the government, you're always going to be unchained. And kind of starting from that core idea is really how he sets kind of the framework of the book. The next thing that he touches on that I think is very important is going solo. I definitely see this when it comes to traveling. Most people need to glom on to a group, whether it be a group of friends, once again, a relationship. And he talks about this kind of concept that a lot of dudes, and I think this is very true, um, that like their experience to entering the world is coming from a woman. Like if they didn't if they're not going on a date, they're not going to go to that bar. They're not going to go to that nice restaurant. They're not going to go experience these other things um, without a woman being there. So they don't even really have their own interpretation on what a lot of things are because they have this handicap, this crutch. And that's how I look at it. It's more of a crutch. You know, you don't feel solid in yourself to go somewhere. Now, especially when I went to certain business trips, which I guess is not necessarily traveling solo, but I was going there by myself um early on in my sales career what i really realized was when you do go out on your on out out on your own you do kind of have this um ability and this tendency tendency to actually you know engage more with what you're doing because you don't really have a comfort zone to lean back on so if you go to even just a store or you go to just a bar you'll talk to the person next to you you'll have a conversation with the bartender you'll have a conversation with the dude at the booth next to you because you know it's just you and it's a very freeing kind of uh, perspective to have and kind of to go on that. And that's something that I definitely took from his book because when it comes to being at my actual hometown when I'm not traveling, there were times where I wouldn't go to places. But I kind of took him up on, on, on that mentality and, you know, it's way easier to get a bunch of freaking sushi by yourself than to pay for sushi for two different people. And you can do this more often. So um, that's something else that I definitely saw. And I've always felt that traveling solo, uh, one, is really the mark of a person. You, When somebody can travel solo or eat solo, especially when I was a server and a waiter, you they do get a different level of like respect from people. Because people know 
how difficult that is from just to be content with that situation. It's not coming from a lonely place. It's coming from more of a place of, you know, this is what I want to do. I'm being me and I'm just going to go out and have fun. And I definitely agree with that, whether it's traveling or going somewhere, but also just kind of embarking on the mission of your life. Like nobody is really going to be going there with you. And kind of in some of my other videos, you can't be looking for a cosign. The next thing that I really enjoyed, and this is kind of where I'm going to after this and the next point I'm going to start breaking away is really prioritizing yourself. Um, so he talks about this from a time perspective. So when I get into kind of what brought me to even seeing his channel before I bought the book, um, this was a big part of it is that like, you know, your time is pulled in all these different directions. If you don't have your own business, you work in a nine to five, um, you know, that's also already a big amount of time that's not yours that's pulled to do somebody else's endeavor when you start to add on relationships if you get deeper in these relationships start to have kids which there's no problem with kids but it's like when you're taking on these commitments not as a choice just as something that happens that's when it becomes a problem and you don't have time for yourself so don't really ever and this is kind of coming from his perspective don't really and i agree with it don't really ever let somebody you know keep you away from your hobbies i remember um on one of the zoom calls because i do mixed martial arts and you know my coach would have these zoom calls for us to join on to and he was talking about one person that he had that their wife basically made them quit jujitsu because it was taking up too much of his time which jujitsu is not or any martial arts but specifically ground martial arts it's not something that you can learn on a one one day a week one day a week for one hour basis like if you want to have any level of proficiency where you can say you know i can beat an untrained person you have to be going at least two three times a day uh and at least three i mean not three times a day three times a week especially if you don't have grappling experience like if you've never wrestled you never spent a lot of time you need that mat time to learn so it is going to take a lot but don't ever let somebody else pull you away from that hobby because you want to make them happy and prioritize your time and your needs and what you want to do and he starts talking about self-care and other things there i mean you can go deeper and deeper into it but that's the core kind of idea is to prioritize your own time for what you want to do and not letting other people take that up and that's really uh kind of my feeling of most of what he talks about in the book obviously if you've ever watched this channel the primarily it's more of like a MGTOW channel i if i ever gave him a recommendation i would just kind of say to start wiping off that banner just focus on the free agent lifestyle because i think that it resonates better with more people um but you know to each his own but obviously he talks a lot about dealing with women and i'm going to kind of bring it into where i was at and how i got onto his channel was that you know the summer of 2019 um i had a pretty good rotation of like three girls going on and that was kind of something i was building up to now it wasn't perfect you know maybe they could have been hotter but that with that all aside what i made most realized was it took up a lot of time and a lot of energy especially if you're drinking or doing other things so i'm going out on a tuesday night you know going to sleep late trying to drag myself to work trying to get through the work day trying to go to jujitsu and then on a friday night i'm part of the fight team so i had to do four hours every saturday morning it's a commitment that i want to do so i'm going to that and then i go to harlem i was living in brooklyn if you don't know that's like an hour and a half of transit time to get there but i mean my training was in manhattan so it's easy to get there hard to get back sleep in there only end up getting one day of free time a week to myself and obviously i want to start the online business and do a lot of these youtube videos i'm like not having any time to do what i want but it's like don't i kind of have what i want and then that's when i kind of was first getting the idea that like maybe the situation i want with women at least at this point in my life is not that uh then fast forward to i kind of let a lot of that dwindle off covid time basically i was in an entanglement to take jada to pick his smith's uh words uh with this girl that was in my apartment building at the time and she was kind of feminist a lot of the red flags that after watching his channel that he mentions didn't really know anything about that but basically we butt heads a lot she was very annoying and it was kind of one of those situations where it was like whenever we would do whatever we would do i would feel almost like i sacrificed a part of myself it's like 
is this really worth the headache of even just dealing with that personality that I'm not getting along with? Like, is this little piece of peace leave to take care of, to take his words, really worth the time? Now, I never really, like a lot of that stuff he talks about money, I'm gonna keep it funky with you. I've never had that issue. We be going to the park, you come into my crib, I have tea, we can make some tea. If you want a drink, I'm a drink, and basically I buy a, buy a bottle of wine. I've never really had this financial issue with women, so I don't really pay for that much in any context. So that's never been my issue. It was just more of the time, the energy, and the effort. And it's like, I would rather spend all of that on something else other than that. So long story short, I was listening to a lot of Patrice O'Neill, who's always been my godfather in terms of, you know, that type of stuff, the uncle I never had. And somehow I got onto his page and I started listening to his content. Now, I do like his content. There's two other creators that do make stuff in the MGTOW bandwagon that I like as well. I'll give them a little bit of shout out. Like I like Better Bachelor, I think he's funny. And I also do like Think Before You Sleep. I think he makes some good content, he's funny as well. Um, now, I would never really ascribe to the MGTOW movement just because I like, I like butt. Like I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it funky with you again. You know, and I'm never gonna remove that from my life in that way. Uh, and I have other things I can get deeper onto it, but I do think there is a value in understanding that, you know, being secure in your own masculinity and being prioritizing yourself over women being involved in your life, that there can be periods of your time, life, that they're not really involved and you can have a very fulfilling situation was really never a thought process that I had. Like it was always like, you needed that around the periphery to kind of validate yourself. And until I really heard that content so far to the other side, I never really un like even entertained that thought process because to be honest, I've heard about MGTOW for years, but for the vast majority of them, especially the ones that take it further away, and I'm not saying he's that kind of person, but I feel like they're the kind of people, you know, if you ever play pickup basketball, you know, it's the rich kid that's got the nice ball, you guys are playing with his ball, and he loses the game, and then the next group, they don't pick him to play, and he's like, screw you guys, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. That's kind of how I view a big portion of the more extreme MIG towers, and I'm just not ascribed to that, because in a lot of those channels, you hear them say words like, you can't compete, you can't compete, you can't compete. Maybe I've been a competitor my whole life, uh, whether it be in sales, whether it be in martial arts and wrestling. So I never really felt like I can't compete. Like I feel like I can compete very well and I want to compete at the highest level. So those kind of things never really went with me. But I do still feel like you can, you know, listen to something that you don't agree with every piece of and still get a lot of value from it. So I definitely did get a lot of value from the book. Shout out to him. Uh, that's really it for this this review. You know what to do. If you mess with the vibe, welcome to the tribe. I'm trying to keep my, 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 my speech a little bit better. I've noticed that that's a trend that has happened recently. But like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, peace.